Ibrahim Abdullah, it's a wonderful pleasure to have you on our program. I wanted to speak to you first about the latest Muslimish conference where you presented some of your artwork. Can you tell us a bit about that artwork? Yes, I, uh, this, in this, this year's conference I, we, uh, I presented three pieces. One was uh, related to Islam, one was related to Christianity, and one is like science themed. The first one, I changed the verse, the first verse of the Quran, اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الانسان من علق. Read by the name of your Lord that created, created men from semen. I changed it to write by the name of your mind that created, created idols from paper. Uh, which, you know, which, you know, I, I like that piece. It's a beautiful piece. And the piece of wood that I did it on was beautiful too. Uh, the second one, I put all the verses of the, of the New Testament that I thought were wrong and are just, just disgusting because, you know, I hear a lot that people defend Christianity say like, well, Islam is violent, but Christianity is peaceful. And like, you know, no, the Old Testament is violent, but the New Testament is peaceful. So here, this is like really bad stuff. It's in the New Testament. You, so I wanted to make sure that that's there. And then uh, the third piece I really brought up because it's for a friend. She's going to take it for Iman. Uh, it's got chemistry. It's like it's like the periodic table, and I put it the uh, the uh, different and carbon. I made like roots coming out of it. Like it, like it's fun. I I like working with wood. Uh, it really the inspiration for that really came from Islam also because when I first argued with my friends after you know telling them that I don't believe in the things in Islam, uh, one of the things that I mentioned and, and is that uh, there's a hadith that says before the end of the day the tree is gonna talk. And it's going to tell Muslims where the Jews are so they can kill them. And that part really like, I mean, when I was, when I really believed, I didn't, I, I heard it and it didn't like stop me. I, I kept going. But now like w once I had started questioning, that, that really pissed me off. Like, like really, you think a tree is going to talk? And if the tree talks, it's going to tell you to kill someone? Like, like it's a tree. Like, you think the tree is going to tell you to kill someone? Like, so like, so like when I first started working with wood, uh, it was, that was my inspiration. Like, like, let me show you what the tree will say. The tree will not gonna, it's not going to tell you to kill someone. The trees, you know. So, yeah, that was... Ah, beautiful. Yeah. And so, one of the discussions at this uh, conference, um, it was about the importance of art. Yes. And its, a, its impact on human society. Can you talk a bit about that? And also, in criticizing things that are inhuman or taboo. Yes. Well, uh, it really like the whole idea of like having an, a conference that, that is about advancing the sciences and cultivating the arts, that was Jinan's idea and, and she always comes up with the best ideas for these things because we, we're, we, we don't want to be just about what we're rejecting or what we're against. We want to be about what we're for, we want to just build a different model, like start a different and, and, and most of our, 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 uh, our ethics almost comes from art and, 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 and um, it, it replaces the role that dogma used to like play in our lives and we need to cultivate that we need to encourage that for people because it it really like it completes the human character in a way uh, and that's why we wanted to like focus on art and and, and most of our members here they like they have an artistic side like I'm, I don't consider myself an artist but you know I, I, I uh, I just like to like like draw on wood I like to like write things on wood and and, and but I, and and it's really because the, already the piece of wood that I'm picking is already beautiful without me touching it. So it's about appreciation for the art, like having something else that to 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 uh, draw beauty from, on and 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 get these nice feelings that we used to get from religion from. Mm. And uh, what's interesting about Muslimish is, uh, I, first of all, everybody loves the name. Yeah. You know, they think it's the greatest name ever. I really, I think too. It's just such a great animal, Muslim. Yeah. And it also could work Mish Muslim, which is not Muslim. And that's why, like in our logo, the M is double. So, like that was one of those like little tricky things. Ah, it can be Mish Muslim, which is not, not Muslim. Muslim. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so th this idea, what's the idea behind this? Because it's, it's got both ex-Muslims and Muslims yes. in it. So it's quite an interesting space to yes. be in. Yes. And and we, well. The idea is if we really, I feel that if we want to like have real change, we need to work with Muslims. I don't think, like our numbers are really small as ex-Muslims, I think. And uh, most of us don't feel comfortable. I mean, some, we, this has been changing. We are, more and more we're having more vocal people 
That's definitely happening. But for a lot of people, they can't, they can't speak about it. They can't talk about it. They can't. Uh, so um, it's good to be able to go to a place where you can be either Muslim or not Muslim. It's safer that way. Uh, but um, also, like, we, we, we want to allow a, a space for... Because when I first started, when I first had doubts, there was no place for me to go. There was no place where I can just discuss things with people. And every time I talk to someone about it, they're like, oh, no, no, it's haram. So like, there was just no place for discussion, no place where I can explore my ideas. And, 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 I, and, uh, and, and I felt like we needed that space. And, and uh, it's beautiful because, because I, I, I love it because it has made me understand a lot about the like, nuances of, of of how different people think. Some people would call themselves Muslim. They choose to call themselves Muslim. But if you really talk to them, there's a lot of things in Islam they don't agree with. But they choose to call themselves Muslim for whatever reason. I don't care what the reason is. At the end of the day, they are good people morally and they choose, they, they make the good choices. They just, they want to they wanna, they wanna choose Islam because it gives them comfort in, in, in one way or another. And that's fine. As long as at the end of the day, you're not beating your wife you're not like giving your son double your daughters and you know like things like that it's like what are you doing in real life not because not just the label that you that you put on yourself what is what are your actions what are you really doing so we have as some of these muslims and these and our ex muslim members we both agree on a lot of things we definitely both agree on the necessity of free discussion and the importance of having a space for discussion and getting rid of the laws that that prohibit people from 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 exploring their ideas blasphemy laws we all muslims and ex-muslims we agree that these laws are wrong so muslims and ex-muslims we agree that women men and women are equal you know uh so we have a lot of common and we're trying to focus on what's in common so we can work together and achieve common goals we have discussions like you just noticed yeah that there is a lot of disagreement but we at least we're having a space where we can have this disagreement we at least we have a space where we can have this discussion so even though like for like for a lot of people it can be a little bit off-putting but after like i think if you come on meeting or one or two meetings people like start like seeing the other person's point of view and and I think we need that we need to be able to coexist we, we need to and, and we need to be able to work together because Muslims and we come from the same background we like the same food we have the same traditions we, we enjoy the same things our disagreement on the religious issues shouldn't prevent us from working towards goals we both agree on and that's what we're trying to harness is trying to harness change from Muslims and ex-Muslims working together to get common goals achieved. And uh, just as a final question, tell us a little bit about your background, um, why you started this group. Uh, I mean, you did say you had no place to discuss when you were having doubts. Yes. But um, about your doubts and why you've come where you are, why you've organized all these people together. Well, I grew up in Alexandria, Egypt. I grew up in, uh, you know, in Egypt, you have, you're either Muslim or Christian. There's no choice. Uh, and it's an I it's an ID card. It's it's you know God lives there, kind of like like God is everywhere. Like everything you say, half the words have God in them. My name has God in it. So like like uh, after moving to the United States and you know living here for a while and having a daughter was a big factor for me having a daughter. Uh, really like the the well I just like things didn't make sense to me understanding evolution living in new york city having a membership in the museum of natural history taking my kids there every other weekend i couldn't like like it was and then there was like i think it was like about 2006 2007 there was the big issue about teaching evolution in schools i was totally like uh, i mean teaching intelligent design in school and i found myself even though i still consider myself a believer against teaching intelligent design because my understanding of evolution was was and then i and i asked myself well why I should not be on that side. Technically, I should be for intelligent uh, design, but I'm not. I'm for evolution because I understand evolution. And once, once, um, once you understand something, you can't go back. There are certain things that... Uh, and I just, after a while, I spent about four years not believing, but trying to, to, trying to believe, trying to 
keep my my belief because it was important to me. It was a big part of my character, and I didn't. It was uh, it was not the easiest process, but uh, I consider myself a pretty like like strong person, and I and I handled it. And, I, and it, at the end of it, I just came to the realization, and I like I don't believe this. And and once I once I came to that, once I like told myself that. It became different, and 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 uh, I didn't announce it to everyone. I didn't tell my friends and tell anyone. But it just, it kind of came out during an argument with my friends about inheritance laws because I live in America, and in America you have to write your will. And I told my friends when I was in Egypt visiting that you know I'm going to write my will and I'm going to give my son half and my daughter half. And they all attacked me. They all said there was oh, but they're all guys, and they all it's a it's a. Anyway, they were all men. They don't want their money to be decreased. It's really about money, and that's why it really hurt. It, it hit home for them. And, and uh, I didn't say anything when I was in Egypt. When I came back, I started writing about it on Facebook, and I was attacked over and over and over. And I was, you know, kind of like just like burst out and like, well, you know, well, here's what else is wrong. You think this is wrong? Here, this is wrong, and this is wrong, and this is wrong. And 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 women's testimonies have men is wrong. And uh, Splitting the moon is wrong, and the sun setting in a in a well of hot mud is wrong, and this is all wrong. And you guys like, and, and I just went off, and uh, and I kept doing this for about three four years, and everybody told me, well, you're like, you think you're the only one who's right and we're all wrong. You're the only one. You're the only one. You think you're the only one who's right and we're all wrong. And I was like, yeah, I'm the only one who's right, and you're all wrong. You're all wrong. I'm right. I don't care that I'm the only one. And then I met someone. Who, would, who thought like me, uh, by by chance in a New York City bar, like some Pakistani guy whose name like was Muslim, and, and I and he told me he didn't believe either, and like we just had that best conversation, and I have a very vivid memory of that night. Uh, it was an amazing experience. It made me want to meet others. I went to the Reason Rally in D.C. I sought you out. I looked for a group for for people for ex-Muslims in America. There was none, so I looked and I found you, and I and and you helped us. Uh, start and help us with, with, with your experience and what you've been doing. So uh, it was, uh, that's, and, and then, you know, we, like, and that's it. Then, you know, like the group started and, and, you know, it was. And it's taken off, hasn't it? I wouldn't know, if it, I don't want to call it taking off. I mean, it's not, it's not up to my <laughs> expectations yet, but it's, it's definitely doing good. And uh, even for me, sometimes I go to meetings where there's one person, I don't care. If that person has never met anyone, like it's it's a good conversation. I, this is like they, like these are people who are like think they are completely alone. They've never met anyone before who thought like them, and they they are right. This is the crazy part. You're you're right, and you have everybody already telling you you're wrong. That's just very frustrating. So there's something about meeting someone else. Like oh my God, I'm not the only one. I am not the only one. It's just it's it's euphoric. It's beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Maria.